Good day, grade 12. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. Before we start, we'll continue with our journey into working on how to work out finance questions or exam finance questions. We want to quickly go through how to enroll into the grade 12 maths class. So what you need to do is you need to go to your internet browser and you need to type in www org, and you'll end up at this landing page. Now, if you're a first time user, you need to register. Okay, so that means you need to put in your first name, your last name and your email address. You click register and then you move on to logging in. And when you log in, you just have to put in your email address and your password. And the cool thing is if you click the remember me, you don't even have to remember the password and you click log in. Now, when you do that, you'll get to a screen that looks like this. It will have a red button, a green button, and a blue button. That's all you'll have at the beginning. Okay. Then what's going to happen is that you have to then choose a subject. So you're going to click on the red button, and you'll get to a screen that lists all the subjects okay that turnable has on their platform and then after that you need to scroll down until you get to mathematics and you click the grade 12 mathematics button and you'll click a button that says enroll and it'll kick you back to the screen and then suddenly you'll have this blue button here that says grade 12 mathematics okay so now that you've got that there are a couple of things that we would like you to be able to do well that you can do now the first thing is you will have a button on the left hand side or this line thing there that says live assessments it's not really a button it just says live assessments it's exactly like that now you can access the live student live assessments that i run through that button so if you guys have registered for the grade 12 mathematics and i'm running an assessment there then you will see a red button with the number one, which means that there's a live assessment that you guys can do. And the idea behind these lessons is that we would like to, for example, at the end of the finance section, I would run a live assessment, which would have um, a whole bunch of multiple choice questions on it, on finance. I mean, when I say multiple choice, you'll still have to do the whole problem. It's just the easiest way for us to test this is to do multiple choice. And then what will happen is that after, the, when, the, when the assessment closes, which is usually about two days, I will get a graph of what you guys, how you guys did. So say, for example, it'll say either, oh, look, we had 10% of the paper, 10% um, of the people, 10% um, of the people have got question one wrong. So then I will go and I will look at question 10 percent, look at question one. I'll go, oh, look, question one is on timelines. So obviously, um, maybe a lot of you don't understand timelines. And then I will go through that again. So that is the idea behind the live assessments. OK, the next thing that is important is the upcoming events. Now, if you have registered with grade 12 mathematics, then you will have upcoming events for all the grade 12 mathematics lessons. If there you've registered for more and guys you're welcome to if you're doing grade 12 maths and you're feeling that a little bit squeamish about your grade 11 maths you know that you need to go through it you're welcome to register with grade 11 maths it's all free okay and you can watch the grade 11 maths lessons as well and use all the material on the turnable platform so anyway so in order to view the live session and uh, you select the upcoming event so you click there okay and you will get to a screen that looks like this now again if you have registered with lots of classes, then this is kind of what your screen will look like. But if you've only registered for grade 12 maths, then obviously you'll just have the one line or however many grade 12 math classes are, are listed. And then what you need to do is click the view event. Click the view event. So you click it and you get to a screen like this and then you click the blue button. Okay, now you'll get to screen like this and it'll either give you the option, it'll give you the option to open the feed in the new tab, which you're welcome to do because it'll make the screen a bit bigger, which is always nice. Um, but the most important thing is that you need to press the green button. So you need to press the green button to say join the event. So you click that. 
and you get to the video. Yay, so you get to watch the live lesson. But by the way, if you miss the live lesson, say for example, you've got sport from five to six on Monday and Tuesday, but you really want to watch the grade 12 maths, then you can go and click on the join the event afterwards and you will get to recording of the lesson. So don't feel that you can't see this. And also what's important is if you've missed something, if we've done something in the lesson and you're thinking to yourself, oh, I don't understand, let me just watch that again. You can, you can come back and you can watch it again by clicking this button. Now, if you don't understand what is going on in the lesson, um, and obviously I can't personalize this totally, but obviously what we want to do is, and what the aim of this is, is if for example, we're doing finance and you guys are thinking, geez, you're understanding this, but you really, really need some more examples of complicated, again, I'm gonna use a timeline questions, okay? Then what you can do is you can message me, okay? And we've had a couple of people who before have messaged and said, we really, really need help with circle geometry. So then I set up a whole bunch of uh, lessons on circle geometry and we went through the whole of circle geometry, which is great. Um, and we will be doing a similar type of thing in some, some in the near future with regards to some other content. So the point is that you guys can message me. You can also message me if, for example, let's say you're going through the last year's 2015 uh, final exam paper and you really don't understand the memo for question 3.4, then you can message me and we can go, we can set up a schedule where we go through this exam paper questions and we will make a plan. The whole point about these lessons is that they're supposed to add value to your learning and prepare preparation for your final exams. Please note, and this is important, the message Studio does link only works during live sessions. Not don't try and message me during a recording. It's not going to work. Okay, so there you go. That's how you get to enroll in the class. Now let's get back to finance and you'll notice I've added and trigonometry. So if if we manage to get through our finance questions, then we will move on to some nice grade 12 trigonometry. Okay, so we got as far as talking about Matt. He bought a car for 500,000. We worked out his annual effective interest rate and we got as far as working out Matt's monthly installments, which were 12,696 rand and 71 cents. Okay. So now the next question says, Matt decided to pay 12,700 Rand each month as his repayment, which is slightly more. His repayment was 12,696 Rand and 71 cents. But anyway, this is calculate the outstanding balance of the loan after two years. And I like this question because a lot of my students really seem to struggle with outstanding balances. Okay, they really do. So we need to go through this nice and slowly. And the first First thing you need to realize is that the outstanding balance, the outstanding balance is actually, basically it is what you would get if you have compounded interest. If you take your 500,000 and you compound it for the period of two years, okay? So it's gonna be your compounded interest formula minus the future value payments, okay? The future value, the future value of what you are paying. That is how you work out your outstanding balance. So let's go, your outstanding balance, the balance is going to equal, first of all, your compound interest formula. Remember it is equal to A is equal to P one plus I, whoopsie, I to the power of N. Remember that this I is a decimal and in this case it's 18 percent so let's write down our information the mistake i made yesterday when i was struggling with my numbers is i didn't actually i was lazy and i didn't write down what i, I didn't do what i always tell you guys to do i didn't write down all my values so let's just make sure we know the principal is 500 thousand my i for this i is 18 percent per annum but it, we have to change it to decimal, so it's not comma one, and it's compounded monthly, so that's 12. And N, in this case, it is 12 times the number of years that we're talking about, and this is after two years, so it's times by two, so that is 24. 
Okay, so that is this bit here. So therefore we know that it's 500,000 times by 1 plus 0,18 over 12 to the power of 24 minus. Now we need to work out the future value of the payments that he has made for those two years. So we need to use the future value formula. And a future value formula they actually do give us on the formula sheet, obviously, which is going to be x. Okay, we've got it. It is, I've just realized I'm running out of space. So I'm going to delete this little bit at the top here because we don't need it anymore. This is bit yeah. Okay, and I'm going to write down the future value formula. Now, grade 12s, I really seriously urge you guys to make sure that you always have your formula sheet next to you when you are working. Always has to be next to you. You should be using it as a, it should be using it as a, um, learning as a, as a tool for you to be working with, okay? So you need to be going through it and understanding it and making making sure that you are aware of everything on your formula sheet all the time, okay? So the future value formula says that you have got x times by 1 plus i all to the power of n minus 1, that's all in big square brackets, all over i, okay? And again, your i is still 0 0.18 over 12. Your n is still 24, okay? But this time, remember, you need x, and this time your x is 12,700. He's paying a little bit more than what we actually worked out yesterday. So let's fill that in. It becomes 12,700, big bracket, 1, okay, I need a small bracket as well, 1 plus 0, 0,18 over 12, all to the power of 24, minus 1, close the big bracket, all over the i, and remember the i is this 0, 0,18, all over 12. Okay, and now we need to put this all into our calculator. So let's do that. So let's go for the calculator out. Okay, now I'm going to do the two bits just to make sure that we're all on the same page as to how to get these values. So we get 500, 500,000. Okay, let me check. One, two, then one, two, three. Yep. Times by one plus fraction 0.18 all over 12, close bracket, to the power of 24 equals, and that is 714,751,406, and at this point in time, I'm not actually going to round off, because normally, and some people will actually do this all in but one big sum, okay, I'm doing it in two just to make it easier for you guys to understand what I'm doing, so that becomes 714, 751, and 406, 406 minus minus um okay now let's do this one on the calculator okay so we've got a fraction Okay, this is a little bit complicated. So if you guys freak out a little bit about complicated ones, I'm going to do it all in one, and then I'm going to show you again how you could do it in bits, okay? So that it makes it easier for you. So don't freak out if you guys struggle with calculator work. And this is the reason I do the calculator work in front of you and don't just present you with the numbers, because a large majority of my students, I find that they know the stuff. They know how to work out the outstanding balance. They know the, the formula, what to use, and knew how to substitute in. And then when it comes to putting it into the calculators, they struggle which is why I do it in front of you guys. So we've got 12,700. we got a bracket, okay? Then we have to open another bracket, okay? We go 1 plus a fraction, 0.18, all over 12. Then we close the first bracket and we take it to the power of 24, 
and then we go minus one and we close the bracket and it's all over another fraction of 0.18 all over 12 and then we just move this over just to make it easier for myself to make sure I got everything right and I get equals and I get an answer it is 363,645 and 71 cents or 7141. Okay, so it is 363645, 1. Okay, right now I did say that I was going to show you how to do this first. So, I mean, step. So, what I'm going to do is just write to you what I'm going to do. We are going to do it. We're going to do, we, we always work from the inside out. So, we're going to do this bit first. Okay, we're going to add these two and then do the power of 24. Then we're going to subtract one. Then we're going to multiply it by this and then we're going to divide it by this. So this is step one. That is step two. This is step three and this is step four. Now the reason and again I say to you there is nothing wrong in doing it in slow bits. Okay, the only thing I do say to you is try not to stop halfway through because you're going to get rounding errors. In other words, don't write down the number and then go again. Rather, move from one section to another. So watch, this is what I'm talking about. We're going to go 1 plus the fraction of 0.18 all over 12. Okay, equals to the power of 24. Okay, 24 equals, right. Then we're going to subtract one. So what I'm saying is don't now go write 1.4295 and then clear it and type in 1.4295 minus one because then you're going to get more and more. As you do go through the sum, you're going to end up with more and more rounding errors. So rather keep this here and then do the next step, which is minus one. So we're going to go minus one equals, okay, now we're going to multiply it by this 12,700. So we're going to multiply it by 12,700 equals and then we have to divide it by this fraction so we're going to divide it by the fraction of 0 0.18 all over 12 equals and there you go you get exactly the same answer 363645.714 awesome so now what we're going to do is we're going to subtract this 363645. whatever from this Okay, so we're going to clear and we're going to go 714751.406 minus, and I'm going to move this over a little bit, 363645.71, and I need to see the rest of the sum, 41. 41 equals. There we go. And now, because this is rounds and cents, we obviously need to round off to two decimal places. So we look at, we don't look at this fourth one. We don't care about it. We look at the third one. And the third one's a one, which means that the nine stays the same. So this is going to be 351,105 rand and 69 cents. So it's 351 rand, 105.00. 351,105 rand and 69 cents. There you go. So that is the balance that he's got outstanding. Okay. So there we go. Next, let's do the next bit. Okay. Now it says at the end of the two years. Okay. Let me just erase some stuff so we can see what we're talking about. I don't know if we need this balance outstanding yet, which is why. I haven't done anything. It says at the end of the two years, the market value of Matt's car is reduced to 304,200. Determine the annual rate, interest rate of depreciation on the reducing balance. Okay, so obviously I don't need any of this, so I can erase it all. Okay, and we're talking about a reducing balance, okay? The interest rate of depreciation, okay, on the reducing value. So what are we looking at? We're looking at compound interest, but we're looking at it, we're looking at it and it's negative. It's a rate of depreciation. So this time the formula is A is equal to P1 minus I to the N, okay? And the nice thing is they've asked for the 
annual rate of depreciation. So therefore, N is going to be 2 because it's 2 years. We have the original amount. That was the amount that the car was bought for. It's 500,000. Okay. We have... No, sorry. We have the principal, which is the original amount, which is 500,000. We have the amount that it's depreciated to, which is 304,200. So A is 304,200. That's what it's got to. The principal is how much we bought the car for, which was 500,000. And the N is two, and we want to work out the interest rate. So let's pop that into the formula. So we've got 304,200 is equal to 500,000. And then it's going to be one minus I all squared. Okay, so do you agree that what I can do is I can divide both of these sides by 500,000? to get rid of the 500,000 and then I can pop this in my calculator which I'm about to do. So I go 304,200 divided by 500, 1, 2, 3 equals, use this number, 0.6084. Okay, 0.6084. So it's 0, 0.6084 equals 1 minus i all squared. So then obviously what do I need to do? I need to square root both of these to get 1 minus i. So we square root the answer. We're going to square root the answer. And we end up with 0 0.78. So we got 0, 0,78 is equal to 1 minus i. And then obviously what we can do is we can stop it. So i is equal to 1 minus 0, 0,78, which is 0, 0,22, which is 22%. Sure, it's quite a lot of depreciation. So the annual rate of depreciation is 22%. Okay, it's quite a lot. It's a fifth. Okay, right. <laughs> so let's see what the next question is. Okay, so Jack. Jack inherited, inherits 86,500 Rand, okay, and which he invests in a savings account. For the first 21 months, interest is 5.4% per annum compounded monthly. It is then decreased to 6.1% per annum compounded quarterly for the remainder of the investment. Three years after he invests, the initial amount he withdraws 20,000 Rand. How much money has he accumulated in the savings account after six years? Okay, so this is obviously a timeline question. Right, so let's get going with our timeline. So we're going to draw a timeline. Okay, he inherits 86,500. So he starts off here with 86,500, right? He invests in the savings account for the first 21 months. Okay, so 21 months. It gets an interest rate of 5.4%, 5, 5.4% per annum compounded monthly, okay? It is then increased to 6.1%, 6.1%, sorry about the sound effects, compounded quarterly, quarterly, okay? And then it says after three years, now what is three years? Three years is three times 12, it's 36 months. So 36 months, this dude takes out minus 20,000 Rand. So do you agree 20,000? 20, 20,000 Rand, yes. No, now it's 200,000. <gasps> 20,000. So do you agree that we've got three bits? We've got this first bit here, okay, where it's at an interest rate of 5.4% per annum. Then there's this bit here, where it's at an interest rate of 6.1% compounded quarterly, okay. Now he takes out 20,000 Rand, and then there's the third bit, okay. So now, there are, the way that we would work it out, okay, 
is we need to either, okay, there are a couple ways you can work it out. I'm going to show you the long way to work this out, okay, which we're going to do. And then I'm going to show you the short way. And the reason I want to show you the long way is because I find a lot of my students, I will show you the short way, but a lot of my students really struggle to understand the short way. And then they lose. This question is worth eight marks. It's eight marks out of 150. Um, it's eight marks out of 150. So basically what we're saying is that um, that is a lot of marks. Okay, so you don't really want to be losing all those marks just because you're trying to do a shortcut method. It is better, I just want to check, yeah, that's 5%. Okay, <laughs> so if it's out of 150 paper, 150 mark paper. So you guys don't want to lose that just because you're trying to rush it, okay? So let's rather do it in our three stages and work it out, and then I will show you the shortcut. Okay, so initially, do you agree that we've got 86,500? So initially for period one, our principal is 86,500, right? Our interest is 5.4% per annum, but it's compounded monthly. So you have to go to 0, 0, 0.54, over 12 because we have to change it to decimal so we need to divide this by 100 and then we need to divide it by 12 to compound it monthly okay then our n is going to be what it is monthly and they tell us that this is done for 21 months so what do we know that n is going to be 21 and what formula are we using this is obviously interest that is compounded monthly so we know that a is equal to p 1 plus i to the power of n and i'm going to say again to you guys that obviously the the formula is on the inter the formula is on the formula sheet okay so you guys shouldn't be struggling with these formula so let's work this out so now what we're working out is we're working out this amount here we're working out what we're going to get so a is equal to 86,500 1 plus 0, 0, 0.54 over 12 all to the power of 21 okay so um Right, so let us work this out using our calculator. So we've got 86,000, oh, let's try again, 86,500 times by 1 plus, let's do the fraction, 0.054. All to the power of 12, then we need to close this bracket and do to the power of 21 equals. So what do we get? We get 95,000, 95,052. And again, I'm going to say to you, don't round off yet. So we got 7903, 7903. Okay, so... At this point here, we now have 95, our new principal, principal new, is going to be 95,052 and 7903, okay? Now, our interest rate now changes. It changes to 6.1% compounded quarterly, compounded quarterly. Okay, so now we need to work this out. Okay, because what? What happens now? We've got 0, 0, 061, because we have to divide this by 100, over 4, because it's compounded quarterly. But now we're going from month 21 to month 36. Okay, let me just see what it says here. Compounded quarterly, okay, the 6.1% per annum compounded quarterly. Right, so now we need to work out how long this is going to happen, okay. So, it's compounded quarterly, so do you agree that this amount here, we've got 21 
months through to 36 months. Okay, and I'm going to do it slowly so you guys understand. We've got 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, so do you agree my first payment is over there? Okay, it's because it's compounded quarterly. It means it's every, no, it's every three months. Sorry. One, two, three. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so in other words, we need to work out the number of months and then we divide. So to, we're going to go, let's do it a better way. There's a better way of doing this. Okay, we need to know how many months we've got. Oh, I was on the other red. Okay, so we're going from 36, now oh, what was on that red? Never mind. Minus 21 is how many months? Do you agree that that there is 15 and that? So that's 15 months, okay, 15 months. But, yeah. So, sorry, I'm just busy thinking this through and this goes to six years, hey? Okay, I forgot to write that. So, do you agree that it's gonna be compounded quarterly every three months? So actually, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. We actually are gonna write this out. So we're gonna go, well, we, Investing at the beginning of 21 months, we've got 22, 23, 24 hours, right about that. That is the first payment. Then, well, one, two, three, see? Then you've got 25, 26, 27. Okay, let me just erase some. Oh, I can't believe I just did that. Okay, <laughs> thank goodness I wrote these numbers down. Okay, so we were had, we had, at 21 months, we had 95,052 and 7903. And this bit here is an interest rate of I is 6.1% per annum compounded quarterly. Right, so let's try again. I is going to be 0, 0, 61 over 4. Your N you have to work out. So you're going from 21 through to 36 because at 36 months, he takes money out. He subtracts 20,000. Okay, so therefore we're going 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. I'll show you the shortcut in a minute. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, and 36. Okay, so do you see that he is going to pay interest or get interest every three months? So it goes one, two, three, that's one. One, two, three, that's two. One, two, three, that's three. One, two, three, that's four. Okay, so he is going to receive interest for four months between year or four times between year and year. So N is four. Okay, for between 21 months and that 27, 28, 29. Yes, I'm right. Okay, right. So there we go. So that is what's happening. Don't worry about the 36 months, it will be covered. That is for that is for the four months, okay? And we have the P, so now we can go A is equal to P, 1 plus I to the power of N again. The principal this time is 95052, comma 2, comma 7903. 1 plus the interest now is 0, 0.061 all to the power of four. And we're gonna put that in our calculator. And we have a calculator, there it is. So let's clear it. So it becomes 95052.7903 multiplied by one plus, remember this is gonna to be to the power of four here, fraction of 0 0.061 all over, four, close bracket, to the power of four, and then equals, and it comes to, then again, I'm gonna write it out just in case, 10984,9984. And again, I urge you not to round off, okay? So we've got 10984,9984, Nine eight four. Okay, so this year 
is my principal at this point here? Okay, at the 36 month mark. Okay, but at the 36 month mark, he subtracts 20,000. So he pulls out 20,000 Rand. So obviously, what are we left with? Well, let's just put this in our calculator because we're going to need it. Minus 20, one, two, three equals 80,984 and this horrible big number. Okay, so that is going to now be the 80,984,9984. Okay, so that is a new principle. A new principle at this point is 80,984,9984. The interest rate, the interest rate is still 6,1% per annum compounded quarterly. So that's still going to be 0, 0, 061 over over 4. Okay. But now we're going from 36 months through to 6 years. And 6 years is what? 6 times 12 is going to be 70. Two. So do you agree that that's 36 months, but then we have to divide it by 4, and 36 divided by 4 is 12. So how am I getting that? Because we'll be compounded quarterly. So we're taking the fact that we have got 36 months, there are 36 months between this, but it is compounded quarterly, so we divide it by 4, so we get 12, so N is just 12 payments. Okay, so the N is just at 12 payments. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work that out. So I'm running out of space. So I'm going to try and erase and not erase all the ink. That wouldn't matter because again, I've written all the information down again. <gasps> right, so now let's work it out and I'm actually going to change color. So you've got A is equal to P 1 plus I all to the power of N which is going to be the principal of 80,984,9984 multiplied by 1 plus i, which is 0,061, all over 4, all to the power of 12. Okay, so let's work that out and let's get our calculators out. Okay, so that becomes... Ugh, Kept it 80,984. Actually, no, because it has slightly different rounding. 80,984,9984 multiplied by 1 plus your fraction of 0 0.061 all over 4, close brackets, all to the power of 12. And that equals 97,000, sorry, 97,113 rand and 71 cents. 97,113, 97,113. And then we just need to check our rounding. And we've got to go look at the third decimal. And you'll see that our third decimal is a two. So therefore, we need to keep this as 71. There you go. Okay, so that is a long way of doing it. We've just been breaking things up into our three bits, okay? So that is the long way. But now there is a short way of doing this, and I'm going to go through the short way with you to make sure you understand it, okay? So the way that you would do this is this. You would basically, okay, let me just clear everything. Okay, I'm going to clear it all and I'm going to start off again by writing out the number line just so that you understand what we're doing. So we've got the first 21 months and then we've got 36 months and then we've got that this is 86,500 and then this bit here is an interest rate of 5.4 compounded monthly and all of this is no common no six sorry, 6.1% compounded quarterly and it ends up at 72 months, which is your six years. Okay, so the other way of doing it is realizing that every time you can, you're just multiplying, okay? So what you could think of is the fact that for the first 21 months, your A is equal to 86,500 
times by 1 plus 0, 0, 5, 4 over 12 all to the power of 21. Okay, we worked that out already, okay, but then what did we do? We took this answer and we multiplied it by the fact, this thing here, we, if we'd looked at this, okay, this here, let's call this, let's call this answer A, right? Well, that is answer A. We then took answer A and made it be the principal. So we said the new answer A was equal to this answer. Okay, let's make this a different color. So A new equaled this A multiplied by, and then we did it for this bit here, okay, and then we did the second bit, but there's a different way that you can do it. You can, so, so do you realize that instead of writing out a new year, okay, and doing a second sum, we can actually realize that we're just multiplying this thing here with this bracket. So we could make it one sum. Okay, instead of doing that, we could say, well, in that case, let's just work out what should be in my bracket. So if we do that in this bracket, there is going to be one plus, and now there's a different way we can do this as well. We've got the new percentage, which is 0, 0, 6, 1, all over 12. But now what we can do is we can actually forget about the 20,000 Rand being subtracted in 36 months. We will work that out in a second. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to work out the full amount that will be earned. Okay, so we've got from 21 months through to 72 months. Okay, so if we subtract that, we've got 72 minus 21. Do you agree that we end up with 41? Okay, 41 months. But remember, that actually we have to pay every four months. Okay, we have to pay every four months. So or every three months. So how do we do this? Okay, do you agree? Well, another way of doing it is to think, okay, fine. We want to go from 21 months through to 72 months. So the easiest way to do this is 21 through to 24 is going to be one payment and then that is two years so then we're going from two years to six years is going to be four years four years oh that's why because that's 51 shame okay four years is 48 months okay and if we divide that by four we get 12 so we end up with 13 payments do you understand that okay 13 so we end up with, because there's going to be one year, so we end up with 13 here, so that would be the interest all the way from year to year, right? But, but this dude subtracted, he took out 20,000 Rand over year. So what we can do is say minus 20,000 Rand times by 1 plus 0,061 over 12 for the last three years, which we just worked out, was 12 payments, okay? So therefore, we've got 86,500 times by the interest for this bit, times by the interest for this bit, and then we subtract what would have been earned on the 20,000 Rand for those 12 months, and that will give you exactly the same answer as what we just did. Okay, so I'm very happy for you guys to do either way. Either way works, okay? But you guys need to, need to, need to make sure that you understand what you're doing and get the right answer up. Right, okay, grade 12s. I hope that that's helped you a bit. Um, I think I'm going to, yeah. Tomorrow we are moving on to trigonometry and we are going to be doing compound angles and double angles because that's what's been requested. So I hope you guys have learned a little bit and that you can practice some of these in the exam papers and then come back and ask me if you didn't understand something. Have a great day.